2019 was quite possibly the best year for Ninjago sets, having absolute bangers one after another, which is something you can't say about the shows. But as always, polybags and foil bags won't be counted for this list since they are not sold at most retailers and are freebies on lego.com or with the Ninjago magazine. Starting out this list with the worst of the year, and I really don't know what LEGO were thinking when releasing this set, because for 15 bucks, it, this ain't a chief. This is barely worth 10. Of course, being a minifigure pack, the main draw of the set is, well, the minifigures, which isn't the best selection. Giving us a hodgepodge of Kai minifigure, having the torso and legs of Legacy 1 Kai, with a hood of Season 11 Kai, and a Clutch Powers minifigure, which thanks to Ninjago City Gardens, the only thing making this figure exclusive is the utility belt piece. Compared to literally every other minifigure pack that LEGO has ever released, the build of the set is pathetic. While I'll give this set props for including both a Blizzard Samurai and a Pyro Destroyer minifigure. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the Spinjitzu Slam sets, while I do admit that the Tornado pieces are phenomenal, and not only the best, but the most accurate spinners we've ever gotten, the minifigures are really mediocre, with Jay being one of the worst looking minifigures of all time. None of these colors look good together, but I appreciate the reuse of Linnea's Tornado piece for the Blizzard Samurai, the fact they include a Forbidden Spinjitzu staff in a 20 euro set, but again, the minifigures in all these sets kind of ruin them. I also don't get why Jay's Spinjitzu Tornado is blue and green instead of blue and yellow like the side builds, but at least the minifigure is good. And the rest of the Legacy Spinners are all equally great, being very interchangeable, except for, well, Jay's Spinner is kind of mid. The double packs are really great, and I'd like to see LEGO do more double pack spinners in the future, but Lloyd's really should have been two shades of green instead of green and gold, but just a minor nitpick. Technically, the only Season 10 set ever released is pretty damn good. The Oni have some of the best villain designs in Ninjago, even if they were terrible villains in the show. Lloyd's Kendo Training Pod is unfortunately the last Ninjago Battle Pod to be released, which I do hope we see return someday, since these were generally some of the best gimmick sets to be ever released across all LEGO themes. The Shoryu Copter is an okay set, but I'm not a fan of random blades sticking out the sides. Also, this set really had no reason to be 30 euro, outside of the fact that it comes with tree minifigures. Monastery Training is a fantastic companion set for Spinjitzu Monastery, really encapsulating the old impulse buy sets in early Ninjago. Lloyd's Journey is a set that I feel very depressed about not getting because of its absurd price on the second hand market with Akita in her animal form really driving up its value. My only complaint is that I wish this set had Lloyd's Season 11 hood instead of a half mask, which on a side note, I cannot stress how happy I am the LEGO set putting incomplete suits and sets with half masks instead of the normal suit's hood. The Katana 4x4 is like a worse version of the X1 Ninja Charge for 2014, but at least it's a cheap way to get Char and a Pyro Whipper. Cole's Dirt Bike is both a worse and better version of Cole's Blaster Bike from 2015, which I think is probably the best way to describe the set. But again, at least it's a cheap way to get Cole and Kai Season 11 suits. Also, has a turd minifigure, which again brings into question why the Shuri Copter was 30 euro instead of 20. The Samurai Mech, which for some reason isn't called the Samurai X Mech. It's not a great remake of the 2012 Samurai X mech, but it's a fantastic remake of the Day of the Departed Samurai X exosuit, included in the Samurai X cave. But yikes, the legacy knuckle and crunchy minifigures look awful. I honestly wish they weren't included, so the set would have been 10 instead of 15 bucks, which is slightly overpriced, but eh, could have been worse. The Golden Dragon is such a great set for 20 bucks, and has a phenomenal Golden Lloyd remake with one of the best face prints in Ninjago. Which I get, it's not accurate to the show, but it's really unfortunate that every other set this minifigure came in didn't include this face print. Which I do wish the actual design in the show also had the golden burst of energy that this legacy variant has, but this minifigure was made 6 years after its debut in the show, so you can't really help that. The Overlord's redesign is low-key one of the best character designs in Ninjago, being on par with its Crystal King design, and I can also appreciate the inclusion of a Stone Warrior. To be honest, the Blade Cycle redesign isn't the best compared to the original version, but in a vacuum, it's incredible. Same can be said about Zane's Ice Mobile, which hasn't undergone that many changes since its original 2012 design, for 30 bucks is a really great deal, since you definitely could have seen LEGO selling these both separately for 20. The Legacy J Stormfighter completely blows every other Stormfighter design out of the water, and it's one of the best J sets ever made. It is disappointing though that we never got all the Golden Weapon vehicles remade in Legacy, or any of the Serpentine Generals, which is still kind of strange. Alright, let's be real here, Boreal really carries the castle of the Forsaken Emperor. The castle build, in my opinion, is very bland and extremely un underwhelming. But Boreal makes this set worth its 100 euro price tag. And of course, the minifigures in this set are all really great, with Akita being a standout figure, albeit now very expensive on the aftermarket. But thankfully, the Ice Emperor was later included with Ninjago magazines, so at least there's that. Firefang really is just an incredible set for 40 bucks, and made it surprisingly easy to get in a Sphere minifigure. 
for an affordable price. Fred the other says that she came in, which speaking of, the land bounty easily could have been the best secrets of forbidden spinjitsu set, but just like the Shuri copter, the random blades on the side really take away from the set, as well as the exposed Techno pieces littered throughout the set, which just looks really messy and proves that LEGO need to make Techno pieces in more colors. At least Wu is extremely drippy. Cole's Earth Driller is one of the biggest legacy glow ups of all time. Comparing this to its original 2013 set is literally night and day. It also gave us the first giant stone warrior figure as an added bonus which looks very good. Entering the top tree with the Monastery Spinjitsu which again is a near perfect set, but my only complaint is that there's no interior. I guess that the set was only 80 bucks, but I honestly would have preferred if we got a much bigger and more accurate set with the cost of the price going up. It could even make a great 18 plus set. I guess this is also technically the best March of the Oni set since it has the murals as stickers. The best secrets of Forbidden Spinjitzu set is Lloyd's Titan Mech, which was a huge turning point for Ninjago Mechs. It continued the Titan Mech trend that started in 2015, but just thankfully at the time of recording this video, is still ongoing, giving us the best Ninjago mechs ever made. But it was unfortunate this was the only set to have a complete Season 11 Lloyd minifigure. And finally, the best Ninjago set of 2019 and one of the best Dragon sets ever made is the Legacy Ultra Dragon. The minifigure selection is incredible, and the same can be said for the design of the dragon. I appreciate the redesigned dragon heads that look unique and stand out from one another without compromising the appearance of the set. Can't forget about the built-in carrying hand leader that helps make you moving the set from one shelf to another super easy and practical. And there we go, that's how I'd rank every Ninjago set released in 2019 from worst to first which to reiterate was one of the best years for Ninjago sets. Let me know in the comments how you would rank these sets differently, but all that said, see ya.